In this cruise update, I want to cover one of the most underreported but significant things going on in the world of cruising, and that's the dramatic departure of cruise ships from US waters over the last few months as cruise lines pull their ships out of the US. What's going on? Why are they doing it? And what does it mean for you and the return to cruising in the US? At the beginning of the pandemic, over 120 cruise ships were sailing or entering US waters. By the time that hit August, there were only just over 30 ships in US waters. What exactly is going on and what does it mean? I think there are five critical things that you need to know about that triggered the pullout of ships from the United States. The first big trigger was the need to repatriate crew. The CDC, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention in the US, introduced some new rules not long after the shutdown, which prohibited cruise lines from repatriating and removing crew off those 120 odd ships that were in US waters, bringing them on land, using commercial transport and putting them onto commercial flights. So the only real option that cruise lines had was to sail them home. And there was a dramatic removal at that point in time of ships out of US waters. The Carnival Corporation group, which includes obviously Carnival, Holland America, Princess, Seabourn, they sent over half their fleet all around the world to repatriate crew. They took home 40,000 crew members. That was the first big trigger for a lot of ships leaving US waters. The second big trigger for ships leaving was some rules which followed not long after where the CDC put in some really strict regulations and rules around crew who were on the remaining ships in US waters. Crew members had to be given their own cabin, which was fine, so they weren't sharing cabins. But there was strong pressure to keep crew when they weren't working in their cabins. So basically they were kind of quarantined and stuck in their cabins. And there was restrictions on the amount of social activities they could do, things like the fitness centers should be closed, there shouldn't be bars, there shouldn't be social events. And some of the cruise lines took the view that this was a really bad idea for the health and welfare of their crew. So Carnival Corporation, at that point in time, made the decision to take all of their ships out of US waters so they didn't have to follow those rules around their crew. Many of them just moving into the Caribbean, but some of them further afield into Europe and further beyond. Those two first key triggers meant that the amount of ships that by June had reduced from 120 ships to just 50 ships. The third big trigger, which caused more cruise lines to pull ships out after June, was the CDC introduced another rule. And this is where they introduced the color coding system, which was designed to track and report on either suspected or actual outbreaks of COVID-19 on those ships still within US waters with crew only. The system when it came in was pretty controversial and disputed a lot by the cruise lines. Only one ship and one cruise line got a full green early on, and that was actually the Bahamas Paradise Line. At that point in time, many more ships started to leave. So when that system came in in June, there were 50 ships, but by the beginning of August, 18 ships had left, and there was only 32 ships in US waters. The two reasons that cruise lines used for pulling out was not so much the tracking of the ships, but two other things. So the first thing was cost related. So Norwegian Cruise Line had 20 ships in US waters. They pulled 17 of those out and sent them away, mostly to Europe. And what they argued at the time is with the ships now in cold layup and with cruising suspended for an indefinite period of time, was they needed to find the cheapest way of keeping those ships in limbo, as it were. And they argued it was much cheaper to move those ships to places like Europe, because the costs were lower in Cordelette layout, but also there was more flexibility about as crew ended their various assignments and contracts, they could get them off in those ports and get new crew back on. The next big trigger was the need to send ships to Europe to the shipyards to do for its maintenance work and updates. So for example, Virgin sent their Scarlet Lady back to Genoa, where it went through some updates and changes, for example, introducing the whole filtration system to improve their whole air conditioning. What's interesting is there's only three cruise lines that actually have ships in US waters remaining. And the first of those is the Royal Caribbean Group. They actually have 22 ships still within US waters, mostly their Royal Caribbean line ships and their celebrity cruise ships. MSC Cruises has kept their four ships that are based out of the US in US waters and the Bahama Paradise Line has one ship. So what does this mean for us as cruisers and this dramatic pulling out of ships out of the US all the cruise lines have said, and we've seen this in Europe as well, is that when ships do return to service, they're likely to be looking at 
what artillery they're going to be running out of the US and how many ships and which ships. So they have ultimate flexibility. They are unlikely to come back with existing itineraries and they're unlikely to come back with the full fleet. They don't need all of their ships close because I think it's extremely unlikely as the cruise line is telling us that when cruising is given the go-ahead in the US, it's going to start with a big bang. It's going to dribble back with various trials as we've seen happen in Europe with a few ships at a time. So ships leaving the US waters is probably less dramatic from the cruise line's perspective than perhaps as us as cruisers who are expecting cruising to perhaps start with a big bang. There has been a dramatic pullout of ships out of the US. Those are the key triggers and th reasons for that and what I think it means for us. Remember, I have frequent cruise updates, so why don't you watch others of those now and certainly make sure you're subscribed to the channel to watch the updates as they come through.